welcome back. Thank you. Glad <laughs> to be back. <laughs> Oh, it feels great. I mean, my mom's here, my grandmother's here. I was born and raised, so it feels amazing. Yeah, was it was was that one of the big deciding factors for you in terms of landing here, or kind of like what went into the decision? Uh, just weighing on my options. I mean, I'm from here. I know what to expect. I, I mean, that had a uh, that had a big thing to do with it. Of course, my family's here. Yes. Yeah, you know, you're 37. Made it all in your play for the world, for the Saints. Mm -hmm. And that says a lot about this area. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, having grown up here, what makes this area so full of talent that goes to the NFL? Just the way we brought up. I mean, I was brought up in the Seven War. I mean, we're tough. Uh, being from St. Augustine High School, it's just, it's just a place to grow up and be there. I mean, it's hot outside all the time. Everywhere you go, it's hot. You just got to work hard down here. You just got to be. Special. I don't. I don't know how to explain that question. I mean, how to answer that question. But you just got to be different down here. You got to navigate different. How you. How you act. How you. You know. Bring. Bring yourself to the city. Uh. Yes. Especially after they won the Super Bowl. Marcus Cosen. Of course. Drew Brees. Tyron Matthews. Now. <laughs> did you talk to Tyron much about coming here and just? I haven't talked to him yet, but uh, we always used to talk when I was going through my process of being undrafted in the league. When I was in college, he always had great things to say. Uh, I used to play for a park ball team with his brother, actually, and he used to always come talk to us, give us great advice. I was actually the ball boy when he was in high school, so I always talked to Tyron. You, you understand one of those classic stories about Tyron finding your path in the NFL uh, by doing what you can do. And what, what are the things you think you've done that has, has really made you stand out um, outside of the statue? Uh, just trans the way I transformed my role. You know, I used to be a, a great receiver at Nebraska, and I had to find my role in the NFL as a special teamer. So as a gunner, I, every tackle I made on the field, I was just learning how to tackle. So learning how to keep going and elevate myself as a special teamer and to keep going and stacking those years. How much pride do you take in kind of carving out a niche on social teams? I'm very, very passionate about football. Whatever it is, if you need a cup of water, I'll run over there and get you a cup of water. I love football. I love the way I play the game. I love the game because I blessed it and it blessed me for my whole life. And, and on offense, that's a heavy blocking role too, then? Is oh, yeah. Another same, falls into that same category? Nothing's changed. I love to block as well as I love to catch the ball because the old lineman is doing the same thing for me when I need somebody to throw the ball for, you know, to get the ball for, to me. What kind of teammate was Joe Burrow? A great one. What kind of teammate was you? A great teammate. Uh, Joe Burrow will give you the shirt off his back. He's very quiet, very chill. He's a normal guy, just like you and me, but he's a great teammate, I guess. Great teammate. How much do you see this as an opportunity to, to carve out another role as a wide receiver? Mm -hmm. I see this as a great opportunity. The room is small. Uh, everybody's coming in with a fresh start. Obviously, we have a number one receiver here. Uh, just a great opportunity for me. You know, I never really had that role as a receiver in the NFL, so I'm very excited for it. How excited are you to play with Derek Carr? Say it again. How excited are you to play with Derek Carr? Very excited. Uh, I mean, obviously, he's done great things in the league. Great quarterback. Ready to learn from him. So what was your plan? Uh, it was kind of it was kind of mad at me because I was actually negotiating as as the weekend passed and I thought I was going to sign Monday, but I ended up signing Friday. So my mama kind of called me and she was kind of mad that I didn't tell her. And I was like, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Is she happy now? Uh, yeah, her and my grandma. Very happy. Yeah. How, how did that work out? They reached out to you first and then you reached out to them? Oh, are you talking about my grandmother? No, uh, the Saints. And, you know, when you're a mm -hmm. free agent, and, mm -hmm. and uh, how do you end up going to the hometown team? They called you or you asked your agent if there was a possibility? I just kind of asked my agent, was this a possibility? And it just happened like that. It was quick. Yeah. It was quick. And, I mean, obviously nothing's handed, but, I mean, competing for the gutter spot, the oh, yeah. decision they have for you, I assume, here? Oh, yeah, I, I assume the same thing. Uh, nothing is given in this, uh, in this league, so I assume to have opportunities to fight for any spot I can. How much has uh, Coach Williams influenced you? Um, I know he went to Nebraska, 
he was there, he got there right about the same time. Uh, Coach Dub has always been like a father figure away from home for me. Uh, he took good care of me in Nebraska. We did a lot of learning together. Instead, you talked about uh, kind of telling Stike's family they weren't in Super Bowl. What do you now remember about that? Uh, having a whole week off from school, uh, just bringing the city joy after Katrina. So just everything about it was amazing. My mom, my, my family was happy. I remember where I watched the game. It was in the East by my auntie Hope. So it was just an amazing time for the city. Stanley, kind of brought up Tyron and mm -hmm. your relationship with him, but I'm curious, like, for somebody who went to St. Aug mm -hmm. and, and somebody who's really young when he started his pro career, like, mm -hmm. what's it been like for you seeing what he's done here and then now for you being able to call yourself his teammate? Mm -hmm. uh, he's a living living legend down here. Uh, like I said, I used to play park ball with his brother. He used to come and talk to us when he went to LSU. And just seeing his steps and seeing his story, it just shows everybody from New Orleans, like he said earlier, how do how do I feel about being here? It just shows me that everything is possible. If Tyron can do the same thing and make it and do what he does, anybody in New Orleans can do the same. Going back to the wide receiver, you talked about the obstacle, who the number one is, but what other conversations have you had with maybe Chris Olave or any of the other past catchers? I haven't uh, talked to him yet, so I haven't really got the chance to talk to him. Just having an awareness of the room from outside that where you feel like you add to it? Uh, just my physicality. Uh, uh, blocking, uh, and just the will to do anything, you know what I'm saying? I'm a greedy receiver, so just the will to get in there and get dirty if you need me to. What makes Coach, Coach Dub, uh, what makes him such a unique coach, and well, how does he get guys to, to prosper like you and so many others in the league? Uh, he's passionate. I mean, he's the most passionate coach I've been around probably my whole career. Uh, if it's going to the to the, to the lunchroom to get a sandwich. You want to make the best sandwich. You know, he's just that type of guy that want to get the best out of everyone in the room. And he's going to do that. How important for you as a player is relatability when it comes to your position coach, especially with a guy like, like him? Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's, it's, it's cool, you know, but he's the type of guy that's, he's going to play the best guy. You know what I'm saying? He's not that type of, I feel like it's, it's, it's a, it's just the fact that he can help me with plays. You know what I'm saying? I can just feel comfortable, you know, just asking him questions, just, you know, just anything, but you know, he's very fair. Talk about the transition you had from being a dominant receiver in Nebraska and then mainly a special team side, but how did you find the humble approach that you had that transition? And and Bengals? Yeah, from yeah, from Nebraska to Cincinnati. Uh, I just had a I had a decent coach there that that just helped me a lot. My special teams coach at the Bengals, shout out to him. Uh and uh Seaton Carter, he's from here, local mm -hmm from Rumble, uh, just being there. He was already there at the special teams role. It's just kind of going about the day with him, you know, just how he recover, how he goes about his week. When does he start uh, opening the playbook? Uh, just kind of being a big brother in the lead that I needed. What do you think about these beats? It seems like no matter where you go, you have a hometown connection. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just special. That's just, that's just God. I don't, I don't know. That's just something special that's just happening for me.